the film you are about to see is uh, the birth of a, of a style. It's different from the other film by Roy Anderson, the film that maybe you know, you are familiar with. Nevertheless, uh, it's so crafted that I'm sure you can see the style and his way of presenting uh, the society and human being in a, in a very unique way. Um, it's a film that takes place in summer, so it will take us uh, in another time, and it has a lot to do with youth. And this is also very interesting, knowing uh, the other film that Roy Anderson has done. As you might know, unfortunately, Roy Anderson is not with us. His health condition uh, not allow him to travel. Uh, but we have his producer, who has worked with him with many, many films, of course, not in the 1970 when where a Swedish love story was done. But I ask him to call. I ask you to uh, um, welcome him on stage. Please welcome Johan Carlson. So you were not in 1970 on the set, I presume, yeah? No. Not even born, maybe. I was a toddler, you <laughs> saying. No, I, I've been working with Roy for a very, very long time. Uh, I started working in the beginning of the 90s. And then this film was from a complete, was done, to me, it was done really, really, really long time ago. Another chapter of, of Roy's uh, life. But this film has also been, we work at Roy Studios called Studio 24, uh, and I've been working there more or less since the beginning of the 90s. This film has been part of Studio 24 all the time, in a way, because sometimes Roy re refers to, uh, it was like when we shot this scene in Swedish Love Story or something like that. So I've, I've heard a lot of stories throughout the years. Um, and also Kalle Boman who is an important person, the same age as Roy worked on this film, and they still work together 50 years later, uh, and he's part of Studio 24 too. Uh, and also the actress, the young main actress in, in this film uh, comes by and visits, not every year, but every second year or every third year, something like that. And that's really... Um, they look the same, they are all wrinkly now, but they look the same, especially the, 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 young, the young boy. He has still, now he's 65 or something like that, but he still has this boyish uh, look or, or way of. And our project is called On Transmission, and I know that Roy Anderson, maybe not in a direct way, but in an indirect way, has passed many element many has been a source of inspiration for many other filmmakers like uh, Ruben Hoslund or this is also part of the concept I guess of Studio 24 maybe you can tell us something about it yeah it's, it's Studio 24 it, it's a studio and we have offices and so on and a lot of Swedish and also international uh, people have worked there or have been influenced and then they have become successful filmmakers uh, some people we have don't work with us, but we have a, a connection with them. And anyhow, like Ruben Ostlund, for example, is very much connected to Studio 24, even though he hasn't worked there. Yeah. And so Roy Anderson is not with us, but he has sent something, right? Yeah, we, he did a, a short video, yes, it's a, a greeting video. Maybe look at we, can, we can show that. It's very short, it's very sympathetic. Let's have a look. Mr. Uh, Roy Anderson suggested for this uh, um, event and for this conversation. And uh, please welcome Nikki Lindrop von Bar. a long time collaborator he started working with him in 1990 and is the closest one of the two closest person uh, to Mr. Roy Anderson and to the creative process extremely elaborate extremely 
ambitious and I would say sometimes even foolish that has been developed by Mr. Anderson over these years for, the, for his incredible <coughs> films. Please welcome John Carson. I hope that the order we randomly establish is the best one for handling this conversation. Uh, this is how this will work. Uh, we will have a conversation, we have some pictures to, to, to talk about uh, for about like 45-50 minutes uh, and then in the end we will have like 15 minutes for your questions, so you have plenty of time to think about your questions, not, not the usual Q&A when everyone is unprepared. Um, but we of course we start this uh, conversation by uh, a common point that you uh, share. You both started uh, with an internship at the uh, Roy Anderson workshop. In the case of Nikki, it was an important moment and then you went on following your own project and, and career. In the case of Johan, it has become your uh, mission, your, uh, your, your job and your creative space, this amazing uh, 24 studio. Can we just start from here and tell us about your first encounters with Mr. Anderson and then how this has influenced your work and career. Well, I started with, I went to film school and then we had an internship period and then I called uh, Studio 24 and at, at that time Roy answered the phones and managed practical stuff. Um, so I was an intern during a the creation of a commercial, and uh, I thought it was really great work. And then the last day, Roy said that he was going to make a, a short film in the fall, and he asked me if I wanted to be part of that, and I was really surprised. So then I came back uh, in the fall of 1990, and has been working there since then. But I have made some. Uh, Holidays. A few, a few no, holidays, yeah. <laughs> I worked some years with other projects uh, also during this time. Yeah, yeah so it, it, it's, now I'm not going to be too long about this, but I think it's, Roy didn't have, or we didn't have a plan actually for doing a trilogy and so on. So it's always been, and that, this is a bad thing, I think, that it's been, we did, we did the songs from the second floor in the, uh, in the end, of, end of the 90s. Then I think everybody who worked on that film thought that they were, they were only going to work on that film. So it has been an ongoing... Um, and he knew that it was not just that film and it was not... Uh, I don't know what he knew. I think, I think he thinks as a director, he, you, you do whatever, you need to survive somehow, so you have to produce and, and make money and, and you have to do good things. So that, that I don't know, but now when I look back on it, it wasn't that I was offered the job I've been making now. It's things happen and, and you claim what you want to claim or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and Nikki, what about your first encounter? Yeah, my first encounter. Yeah, I, I was, uh, I, I actually come from the background that I uh, studied uh, prop making uh, for film and theater, like in making props and set design. Uh, so I, I'm like, like you probably uh, know if you've seen my uh, animated projects that I really, I, I love to sort of work with uh, models and puppets and like love different materials and uh, so I um, uh, when I was in the uh, Nordisk Scenography School and it's like a, a school up north for, for set design and prop making actually that's where like a lot of Roy's yes. co-workers come from it's like a yeah. great school <laughs> or at least it was a great school um, so I was one of those uh, students who, who wanted to uh, make an internship uh, at Studio 24 and uh, uh, I I was there uh, for a while during the production of um, it, You the Living, and uh, yeah, it was like a really uh, amazing and like non-forgettable experience. I'd say it's it's both like it's really so magical to just sort of come to that place where 
like you sort of find ways to um, to to build uh, worlds uh, within a quite like, like a quite tiny venue, and you still like with with help from like from play or like working with um, uh, working with um, uh, perspectives and stuff like that. They they really built you know something that could have been like out of the street, but it's not. Uh, and uh, we'll I, we will come back to that later. But it's it was really it was like such a fascinating place to to work in, and I also feel that. Uh, even though it was, I, I must say it was like it was really hard work. Uh, like it was like no kidding around. It was like hardcore working. Uh, but that's also a good thing because like it's important to be able to work if you're supposed to do things like this. And uh, but also I, I felt that you know you just arrive within this quite tight team uh, that knows so well what they're doing. I mean like it's such like. There's such a big part of Roy's films, like knowing how to make these fantastic uh, uh, set designs, and also that as an intern and later on also as uh, like an extra worker from time to time, you really you, you really feel um, you feel very um, important and like as a part of the team right away, and, and you 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 get assignments that are like for real and not just you know like. You can stand over there, like making coffee. You really get to to be a part of the production from day one, and I think that was really uh, exciting. I think that uh, to understand the uh, the thing that you are starting to describe, it's also good to tell something about the place, because when we talk about uh, movie studios or sound stages nowadays, we think about horrible uh, concrete boxes in some outskirts of the cities between IKEA and some other similar buildings, but we're talking about something that is uh, in the city center of Stockholm, that is, looks more like a, a living space and not just a, a, a production space, also like a workshop more than a, a movie studio. Can you say something about this place and how much this place is uh, unique and uniquely affecting the way you make things there? I guess the, the, the main idea, when Roy went to film school, the film school was, it was newly started then in the 60s, and the film school was on the same place as a big, uh, really big uh, old time uh, studio or production company in Stockholm. I think he was inspired by that to create something uh, similar but, but smaller, and I think he had some really smart ideas. Uh, that in the long run have been good for him. Never rent, don't ever rent something, buy it. Uh, I think so. he's not a businessman at all, but he did, did some, some smart uh, decisions. And he had, I think, in the back of his head uh, ideas that then became Studio 24. And then there are other people also who have been part of creating it. I think some, some part of that work Roy is not interested in, and then someone else has to do it. Um, but I think Roy is, and this I found out just maybe a year ago, he was really happy when in, in the 80s, he, he came there in the 80s, in the beginning of 1980, the day that they could buy, no, I don't know the English word, but a, a wood, woodwork, a big woodwork tool. Uh, a machine. Like a machine. He It doesn't matter. But it's for carpenters. Okay. Yeah. But he was really proud. Any, any carpenter who can help. Planer. Uh, planer. Planer. Thanks. Um, but that says something about his. I think he. He's a. He's an entrepreneur. He's not interested in money at all. But he's an entrepreneur. And he wants to build something, and he did. Uh, build, build the studio 24, which is three floors in, in a house, and in the bottom we have two studios. We have actually expanded to another house, we made a hole in the wall uh, to an old... Did they uh, approve of that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, in an old cinema, so it's, it's, it's not that big. So, so from when Roy came there in, in 1980 until 90. Six. We had just one studio, and that studio is, is kind of small. 
So you had the small studio and you had Roy's ambition to always have a lot of depth and, and richness in the images, which he got from, I guess, from art, the art world or other films. So I think those ambition, those facts made us invent, or not invent, reinvent, invent, and, and uh, use different techniques to get him what he wanted. <laughs> Among the things that are very important about this place, don't forget the pizzeria across the street. That I think is another Nowadays. element, yes. Okay. Uh, so we have some pictures that maybe we can uh, start like one after the other maybe. Sure. Play to contribute to the, to the talk, or you prefer yeah. that we... Should we do it now, or should we do it Yeah, yeah, let's, let's start. Let's, let's just put one more thing, that we yeah. haven't... There is one word that we haven't mentioned so far, which is animation. Uh, because uh, of all the own transmission uh, events here at uh, the Linale, uh, this is the only one that is about the transmission in between two different uh, um, styles, not styles, I mean techniques of uh, making films. On one side we have uh, uh, live action cinema, but sometimes not that alive, because sometimes Mr. Anderson uh, uses his actor and his props almost like animation, and on the other hand we have uh, Nikki's work, which is uh, uh, stop motion animation, and it's totally within that history and that genre. Uh, let's maybe say something about this. First, I would like to ask uh, uh, if Mr. Anderson, like I would think there are other directors who have worked uh, in both genres, in live action and animation. I was thinking about Wes Anderson, Terry Gilliam, uh, Tim Burton. Uh, I think it's not by chance that they are all known to be control freaks of every detail in their films. Huh? And then they try animation because probably it was a kind of a natural, uh, not a development, but a natural step in their, in their work. And uh, I was thinking if this idea of animation was ever a reference or for him or an idea to try once or to explore. And then in the case of Nikki, I'd like to ask you if animation was your original uh, idea about your, the way to express your art or after maybe working at the studio or trying other things, I know you did sculpture. Uh, how you came to this uh, form of work and this time? No, he has never worked with animation, and I don't. And we have never. He has never talked about it. Um, and I think that's how he works in a way that he. It's not that he wants to use. He's not. He, he's very much curious of the world, uh, uh, but he's not curious in diff. You know, working in different ways, and he did. Uh, now he wants to explore filmmaking and develop his style. He did uh, um, theatre play in the 80s. Uh, it that seems quite close as well, like theatre, mm, like yeah. yeah. With an, an, uh, with some famous actors who didn't go, come, didn't uh, work so well together. They <laughs> had these struggles. Two two big egos. So in the in the end, it wasn't a big. Uh, experience. It, it wasn't nice. It, it was not a nice experience. <laughs> and then he came back to filmmaking immediately. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so um, uh, as I said, I, I started out as a prop maker and I think my main, um, like, my, I, I come sort of from the art world. My, my dad is an artist and my mom also, like, they, they ran a gallery together for many years. So, so I, um, I sort of wanted to make, like, be a creative somehow, but I wanted to to um, have more like structures and like routines and you know a, a clear, you know, a, idea about what I was going to make. So I felt that prop making would be quite nice to sort of, you know, really, um, you know, you you'd be able to make something and put something of your own inside of it, but still as some. Uh, like with an employer or like as an assignment. So uh, that felt like a good idea to me back then. But uh, then uh, when I was in this uh, school uh, and also when I uh, was at Studio 24, I, I, I just became really obsessed with sort of like building my own worlds in miniature. And I think the miniature part is just me being also maybe a control freak and choosing to sort of I want to be able to do this on my own with like a tiny studio and like not uh, rely on like a big team all the time. Um, and then I 
like ask myself like what can I do with this uh, with this world and so also like these characters that I started to create uh, and also like maybe tell a story because I'm also really interested in storytelling and and, uh, and I love also films. Uh, I'm not necessarily very into animation myself. I, I found this to be a tool for me to also keep my yeah my way my way of telling stories and my my style. So like a lot of people have have asked me about like when are you going to do your live action movie uh, instead of like <laughs> doing the animation um, because to 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 them it's like so obvious that it's so like such an easy step to go from animation to live action and to me it's just like a nightmare to think of because I would never want to work with like real people. <laughs> Such a no, I, <laughs> no, I do want to work with people, but not like these huge uh, teams and, and uh, actors and those things. I, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I, I love to just like sit in my, you know, basement and like folding tiny like milk boxes or whatever. I think that's like a dream, <laughs> the dream uh, uh, scenario for me. Otherwise, you can just take actors, paint their faces white, uh, dress them bizarrely, and do like. Yeah, movies. they need to move a little bit more, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, but, yeah. Since we started to um, evoke some images and some uh, visuals also from the films, uh, I just remind you that at the end of this conversation, we, you will have the chance to see uh, the four shorts that Nikki has done in between uh, 2010 and 2019. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very likely that some of these films you have seen already because they've been in countless film festivals around the world, winning countless awards. So you will have, if you haven't seen them yet, you will have the chance. At the end of this conversation, I think many things that we are talking about now, they will also be very clear from what you will see later. And even more, if you are familiar, and I hope so, with the films of uh, uh, Mr. Anderson, you will understand why Mr. Anderson was uh, uh, suggesting to have this conversation with, with Nikki.